Hey everyone, this is Josh from Predatory Plants here. We're going to make a video today, it's going to be a bit of a long one, demonstrating the entire process of generating Nepenthes from seed. All the way from getting your first Nepenthes flower, identifying if it's male or female, pollinating it, ripening it, harvesting the seed, sowing it, and then walking through the process of growing that out into a brand new Nepenthes that can go on to flower on its own. Uh, the first part of that process, like I said, is getting your first flower and identifying it. We have right here a brand new flower from a Nepenthes spectabilis. This one uh, is a female. You can see that the flowers are slightly almond shaped. They're a little bit longer than they are wide. And that's a, the real indication early on of a female flower. Uh, so we have that right here. This is gonna be a few weeks before this is ready to do anything. Uh, and now we're gonna move around a little bit. It's gonna cut around a bit, so it might be a bit jarring. We'll try to keep it to as few cuts as possible, but these are big established plants that we don't really wanna move around the greenhouse too much. So let's go take a look at one of our males. What we have here is a male Nepenthes truncata. This is the one that we've designated tyrant in our greenhouse. You can see, unlike the spectabilis, these flowers are almost completely round or maybe even wider than they are tall. That's the classic sign of a male flower. Uh, they'll look like little balls le and less like little almonds. And then you can see down here, this is an even fresher male flower. It looks like a little corn on the cob. And even at this level, you can see that they're extremely round all the way up. So that's a classic male. Let's go see what these look like in a few weeks. What we have here is a ripened male flower from the Nepenthes ventricosa that we have designated Victory. Uh, we've used this for some really great hybrids in-house here. You can see the uh, pollen here on the end of these anthers is, is bright yellow. Uh, some plants produce a lot more pollen than other ones. Some of the anthers of certain plants are red instead of this greenish gray color, but all of the males will be these balls with pollen on the end of them. Now what we're going to do is collect some of this pollen. There's a few ways to do it. Some people will take a brush or a toothpick and rub it on the pollen uh, to, to take it that way. We generally just harvest the whole flower. So I'll sterilize my snips here. Just to make sure that there's no cross contamination, especially with important plants for your breeding stock. I will take a pair of forceps and pinch the anther here and just cut the entire flower off at the base. And here you see I've extracted the flower. And then I'll just save that. And maybe I'll take another one just because I'm already in here. And pull that. Now let's go see what to do with this pollen. What we have here is a receptive female flower from a ventricosa by Northiana that we have in-house. And uh, you see the flowers have opened up. They are indeed rather long compared to the male flowers. Uh, they have this drum kind of at the bottom here and a flat surface. This flat surface right here is the actual receptive stigma where you're gonna put the pollen. You can see on the surface of the petals here and here that there's actually like a shiny fluid and that's stigmatic fluid that's indicating that it's ripe and receptive to pollen. Uh, it's also giving off kind of a musty smell and those are all signs that your plant is ready to go and take pollen. So I'm gonna take the anthers that I harvested in the previous video. Here you can see them. This is the anther from the ventricosa and here is the Syerga female flower. And I'm just gonna apply the pollen directly to the stigma here and so you see it really stuck there uh, because this stigma is actually very sticky when it's receptive and the pollen is also rather sticky. I'll do that and then I'll just kind of tamp it down with my finger to make sure that it makes good contact. You can see it makes kind of like a yellow paste on there. And then I can go around and do that to as many flowers as I want. Here's another pollinated one. Tamp that down. And then I just go all around the flower and pollinate. And then of course you'll label where you finish pollinating and switch to a new flower. So let's see what this looks like after a little bit. Now what we're looking at 
is a female Nepenthes peltata that we pollinated a few weeks ago. You can see some of these top flowers. The stigma is kind of marbled. It's a little green on this side right here and brown right here. The brown generally indicates successful pollination. So you can see it's a little bit marbled. Up here you can see another cross that we did that was obviously much more successful. The stigma is uniformly brown, almost looks charred, uh, and that generally indicates really strong pollination and that the plant is going to produce a very large good seed set. So uh, now let's see what this will look like after a couple more weeks. What we're looking at now is a successfully pollinated Nepenthes ventricosa. This is the plant that we have designated as virtue in the greenhouse. You can see the pods now are quite swollen compared to the peltata that we just looked at, but they're still bright green. They're rock hard, definitely not ready to harvest. They're just kind of getting started baking in the oven there. Uh, let's go take a look at what this will look like after a few more weeks to a couple months once they're getting much more ripe. Now what we're looking at is a fully pollinated and almost ripe Nepenthes Rob Cantleyi. Uh, you can see that the pods have swollen significantly, that uh, they're, they're extremely firm to the touch though still, and a little bit green on the outside here. Uh, that means the seeds are not ripe. If you were to crack this open right now, you'd have very unprepared seeds with poor seed coats, and they probably wouldn't survive. So if you squeeze it and it's still firm and it doesn't crack open, it's not ready to harvest, but this is definitely getting there. Let's take a look at what it looks like when it's ready to harvest. What we have here is a fully swollen, pollinated, and ripe seed pod on a female Nepenthes truncata. This is the plant that we have designated torrent in the greenhouse. Uh, you know it's ripe because when I squeeze it, you'll see it just snaps open. And it might even start to open by itself. It's completely uniformly brown, kind of like a toasted marshmallow. That means it's good to go. So I'm perched precariously up here on a bench because this is a very tall flower spike. But trust me that I've already sterilized the snips here. And then you're just going to cut it off at the base. Remove your pod. And here it is, ready to sow. You'll see this is a very large flower spike with a lot of flowers. So I have a lot of work cut out for me. This particular cross is truncata by Taliensis. So we're going to show you what sowing this looks like. So here we are finally at the potting bench and ready to get these seeds sown. Uh, you can see I have the pod that you just saw me harvest from the Nepenthes truncata right here on a clean piece of paper. I have my pot and I have some long fiber sphagnum moss and some milled long fiber sphagnum moss that's been soaked uh, and sterilized. I've microwaved this to kill any seeds or insect eggs or whatever might be in there so we get a nice clean media for sowing. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take my, this is a three inch rose pot, I'll take a little bit of long fiber sphagnum, pack it in there, leave about an inch at the top. Like so. Take some of this milled long fiber sphagnum and press it down on top. Milled is usually better because it has less air gaps. Uh, it's easier for the seedlings to penetrate down inside because they are pretty tiny. Uh, and so we just find it to be a superior sowing method. Uh, some folks sow it on just the long fiber that I put down first. Some people will sow onto uh, uh, live long fiber sphagnum, but that can sometimes overgrow the plant. So we find milled, dried long fiber sphagnum to be best. I'll then take my seed pod crack it open and hopefully these are good looking seeds they usually are yep so you can see right here these are beautiful seeds with nice big fat ovaries that means they have a lot of energy in there and they will be ready to go when I sow them so I'm gonna take a pinch of these and my pot here and I'm just gonna sprinkle them over the top of the pot they'll stick down pretty well Make sure they're not all bunched up anywhere. Take the rest of them. Now, depending on the seed set, the size of the seeds, and your own space constraints, uh, you can choose how densely to sow these. With a large truncata like this, I will generally sow 
one or two seed pods per pot. This is actually a little bit sparse for me. Uh, this is gonna be plenty of space for all of these to grow for quite a while without overcrowding. Uh, I, I would probably, if this wasn't a demo and it wasn't time constrained, sew another pod onto here, but that's all up to personal preference. Then I'll take a spray bottle with distilled water in it and just spray down the top. Make sure you don't scatter the seeds, but this helps get a really good uh, contact between the seed and the soil uh, that will continue to allow it to see the humidity, to soak up water, to fatten up, and eventually put down its first root and open up its cotyledons. So that is a ready pot to start germinating. Let's go take a look at what this will look like after about uh, eight weeks when it starts to germinate. So here we are looking at an extreme close-up of some pots just like the one you saw me sew. This cross is Fusca by Tivii. These were sewed almost exactly eight weeks ago and you can see that they're starting to come up in a big way right now. Uh, you can see they put up two little tiny leaves right here. Those are the cotyledons. And then some of the ones that have been open for a little bit longer, like this one right here, are even putting up their first tiny little pitcher at the end of their leaves and right here. So these are great little demonstrations of what germination is going to look like. And we generally see a very consistent eight week germination in our conditions. It will be different for whatever conditions you're growing them in. Uh, the more fresh the seed is, the faster the germination typically is. So if someone's sending you seed that they maybe harvested a while ago, if you're not in a greenhouse like we are, if your humidity is a little bit low, or if it's just kind of a different plant, you might see germination up to a year. Some people report seeing germination after that long. So don't give up and don't be surprised if it takes a little while, but this is what you're looking for. Let's take a look at what these will look like after one, two, and three years of growth. Well, here we are. You've successfully flowered a male and a female Nepenthes. You've pollinated the female. You've ripened the seed. You harvested it. You sowed it. And now you want to know how long before you have a nice big Nepenthes that you can brag to your friends about. Well, here we are. This is one year later with a common pot just like the Torrential Triumph that you saw me sow a few minutes ago, which is uh, a truncata crossed with a Taliensis. This is a pot after exactly one year of Titanic Triumph. It's a different female truncata that we have crossed with the same male Taliensis from the seed that we just sowed. So this is one year. You can see there's a bit of variation. There's some very big plants in here. There's some little ones down there that probably got shaded a bit and choked out by the big one. We could have maybe transplanted this a little while ago to prevent that. But this is about what you can expect after a year of good growing conditions. Right here, we have an exactly one year old Titan's mirror. This is Titan, the truncata crossed with Mira. You can see it's put on a lot of size in the additional year. At two years old is generally when we start selling plants. So that's about how long before you get a nice big two inch plant that starts showing a few of the adult characteristics of the plant that you're gonna see. So that's two years. Half a year later, we have this dream of victory. This was featured in one of our previous videos. This is clone A from that video. These nice dark purple leaves and a white speckled plant. So you can see after another six months, they really start to put on some serious size and start looking like an adult Nepenthes. So two and a half years. And then it really starts to kick because after a year or more of growth, this is Nepenthes Maiden of Victory. This is Nepenthes Maxima Dark crossed with Nepenthes Ventricosa Red. And you can see it's a one gallon pot. This is a three and a half year old plant from seed many large adult sized pitchers. And I wouldn't be surprised if this plant flowers within a year or two and you can start making even more crosses. So that's three years. You've got one year from sowing, two years exactly, two and a half years right here, and three and a half years. And you see in the background, here's a bunch more seedlings that are going on the same process right now. So that is your summary of how to grow Nepenthes from seed. As always, this is Josh from Predatory Plants. You can take a look at more of our videos here on our YouTube page. Don't forget to subscribe. And please let us know if there's anything else you'd like to see in any of our future videos in the comments section. 
Thanks a lot.